congregation today and those that are jumping on Facebook Live. We appreciate your faithful watching of these videos and I also want to say that we have a sister group that meets in Fort Wayne and that's where we make all of our YouTube videos. So those of you who don't catch it on Facebook, you can also get it on YouTube if you so desire to watch it on YouTube. We do minister the same thing in our Fort Wayne group that we do here, but uh, some people like the YouTube better than the Facebook Live, so whatever people want, Facebook Live or YouTube, they can uh, watch either. So tonight I want to talk about, of course, Mind Brain Connection, number 147, and I want to talk about the allegorical reality of the sea of glass, and I want to talk a little bit more about the four beasts as we get into this tonight. So if you have your Bibles or your phones, whatever you use to follow along in the scriptures, I'll be reading from Revelation chapter 4. Now I'm going to do a little recap of what we had two weeks ago. Last week we talked about the cosmology of Passover, but two weeks ago we talked about Revelation chapter 4. We got into quite a few things on Revelation chapter 4. There's probably going to be one more message on Revelation chapter 4 uh, toward the end, the last four or five verses on the end. So we're going to talk about the sea of glass that you find in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6. And remember when we started this, I shared with you how it talked about a door being opened in heaven. And of course, that door means an opportunity. Yep. Yep. And that opportunity is open to us because it's an open heaven. Mm -hmm. When we desire to walk through this door of opportunity, which I connected with the age of Aquarius, when we decide, it's like, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Yep. When we're ready to walk through this great opportunity Amen. that the book of Revelation is talking about all the way through from chapter 1 to 22, but specifically here what we're looking at in Revelation chapter 4. And of course we know that it's connected, as I said, with the age of Aquarius, and the age of Aquarius is the age of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's also the age of the feminine, not meaning there's going to be some feminist movement going on, but we recognize the importance of yielding our feminine principle, yes. the lower yeah. thoughts and even the intellect, the logic, the ego, the emotions, the five senses. When we yield all of that to our Christ mind, what does it do? It spiritualizes those different aspects, Amen. not trying to get rid of any of that, right. not even trying to get rid of the ego. You need the ego. You need the intellect. You need yep. the logic. You need all of those things. But, you know, one of the meanings of the word theology is God's logic. Mm -hmm. So we want to yield mm -hmm. man's logic yes. on the yes. left side to God's logic yes. of the Christ mind. Amen. And then as we proceeded a couple weeks ago, we came to verse 2. One and two, and we talked about the trumpet there, and I shared with you how a trumpet is associated with a breath. It's associated with a breath. It's not talking about some literal trumpet that someone's playing, mm -hmm. but it is talking about that door that is open in heaven in us, and we hear that word. We yeah. hear that trumpet. Yeah. It's not something we just hear from people or read about. But it is something that sounds on the inside of us. Amen. It's connected with breath, which yep. is the inspiration of the Father, inspiration of spirit. And it's also connected with harmony. Yep. So when we hear that trumpet, what happens is we begin to hear a sound yes. coming from the inspiration of spirit within yes. us. And we begin to experience harmony, not yes. just in our spirit and soul, but in the whole man, yes. spirit yes. and soul and yes. body. Amen. Then we saw a throne in verse 2 of Revelation chapter 4, and we know that Isaiah talked about the throne being the throne of our heart. We also know that a throne denotes rulership. Mm -hmm. So as we hear this voice, as we connect with this trumpet, as we synchronize with heaven within us, we then begin to experience a place and a dimension where we freely rule over the lower thoughts or Whoa. the left side in and of themselves. Amen. We rule in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 3, we talked about the jasper, and I shared with you that the jasper is the crystal. We looked at a few scriptures. It is the crystal or it is the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
We talked about the Sardin stone, which is red, and of course a, star, a Sardin stone or red speaks of our emotions on the left side. So we dealt with that. I showed you also how that what a jasper does, what a crystal does, is it emits and transmits energy. We used to have our radios many, many years ago, and old television sets used to have crystal on the inside of them. And of course, we know, we've taught, I think in the last 33 years, I have probably taught the terrible crystal of Ezekiel 1, 22, <laughs> pro at least four times around yeah. here. And we always expanded it and always got more out of it. And then we talked in verse 3 about the rainbow. There's a rainbow there. Well, what is a rainbow? Well, it touches heaven mm -hmm. and it touches earth. So it brings the two together, this rainbow, meaning that it brings together the joining in us of the right and the left, as they're joined subjectively. They're already one objectively, but as they're joined subjectively. And then we talked about, and let me just say, this is really the prerequisite of experiencing the opening of the seals. Yeah. So yeah. many people want the energy fields open, and they go about it the world's way. And I'm going to share with you how there's one way to go about it, and it's through meditation. Wow. Because it can cause you some problems if you try to get those energy fields yeah. open in the wrong way. You can have some problems. And I've heard of some people that's had some serious problems. Mm -hmm. So then we looked also at the last word in verse 3, which was the emerald. And I shared with you that the emerald speaks of life, but it also speaks of the astral plane within us. That compartment in us that houses all of the thoughts for example, I think I gave this example a, a couple of weeks ago when I was teaching on this. If you, in your mind, think about the house you were raised in, you can bring that to your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? That computer place of you called the astral plane. And a doctor can cut your head open, and they'll never see the house you were raised in. Right. They'll never see your thoughts. They'll never see the invisible realm within you. Now, we read a scripture, I think it was Romans chapter 1, maybe verse 20, where it said that the things that are made, I'm going to paraphrase, the things that are made, the things that we can hold in our hand, mm -hmm. the things that we can see are representative of the invisible realm within us. Yes. For example, you can see a jasper. You can see, you can see a sard and stone. You can see an emerald. You can have that in your hand. So that's something that was made, God made, but it represents what we're talking about, all of these different dimensions of the experience that we experience. Then in verse 4, we looked at the four and the 20 seats, and upon the seats were four and 20 elders. Now, we know elders speak of mature ones. So four and 20. 20 is the number of the universe. Four is the fourfold aspects of our being, physical, spiritual, intellectual, and emotional. Okay? And then it says that these four and 20 elders, or mature ones, and that represents all that I've said so far tonight, the mature ones, they are sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had crowns upon their head. Now, I shared with you how that this can represent the 24, can represent the 24 cranial nerves that we have in order to think properly. You have 12 on the left and 12 on the right. It also can represent the priesthood that served in 24 courses. I could go on and on and talk about the 24 from the scripture, and it's all vital to understand. Then in verse 5, it talked about the lightnings, which are what? The quickening that takes place within us. The conception of the truth that takes yeah. place within us. And the quickening that takes place within us. I've heard Amen. people say that, oh, that quickened within me and I felt my baby leap. <laughs> you feel something when yeah. the word is quickened within yeah. you. Joy yeah. comes. Amen. You feel like jumping up and down or yeah. hanging from the chandeliers or whatever. Yeah. That's the lightning. And it talks about the thunderings. And what are the thunderings? Well, listen, the thunderings are the shaking on the inside of you that causes something to change within wow. you. Come on! And mainly between the ears. Amen. That's what he's talking about. That's right. And then the voices in verse 5 speak of the instruction that we receive. Everything I'm teaching in this message from Revelation chapter 4 is instructions for us to be able to proceed then into chapter 5 and chapter 6 and experience the opening of the seals. Amen. We have to have some instructions. We don't just do it any old way. Right. That can cause some problems. And then we looked in verse 5 at the seven lamps of fire burning, it says, before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And I took you to Isaiah chapter 11, 1 and 2, where it talks about the spirit of the the knowledge, a spirit of wisdom, and so forth. There were seven different aspects of that. 
But I can take this even further because, yes, we do want to move just beyond the gift realm and just from faith to knowing. And that involves the sevenfold spirit of God in Isaiah chapter 11. But it also represents the candelabra that was in the tabernacle that Moses constructed. The sevenfold spirit of God and the candelabra. And each of those candles had to be lit as the priest would come twice a day and put the oil in so they can be lit. So the same thing happens in us. We're the candelabra, and we become lit. As the energy fields are lit, or as they are enveloped by the presence of the Lord and the Spirit of God and the energy, the chrism, the anointing. See, people think, well, you know, I just need the anointing to preach or teach or lay hands on people. You need the anointing to flow and the energy and the chrism to flow in your energy fields to come into fruit that remains where health is concerned. Come on, babe. So each of those lamps on that sevenfold candelabra represents us being lit, yeah. candle by candle, energy field by energy field. And that's what we see then, as I said, in Revelation 5 concerning the opening of the seals. The voices that we're talking about here, and what I'm teaching in Revelation chapter 4 is preparatory. It's preparatory for us to really experience the opening and the flowing of the energy within our energy fields. And then verse 8, we talk, I think we left off last week, maybe at verse 8, I'm not even sure. But verse 6 says, and before the throne, this is what I want to talk about tonight, sea of glass. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Now we have many things here, because as I've already stated, so many people want this divine help as fruit that remains, but yet they don't want to take the instructions. See, listen, there's going to be an open box for each of us, yep. and something's going to jump out of the box. You got that right. And you know what? To, you need to know. I need to know what to do with what jumps out of the box, Amen. and what is jumping out of the box. What is jumping out of the box, and I'm not talking about we need to see beyond the box as far as the word is concerned. I'm not talking about that. There is something within us that's beginning to jump out of us, and we need to know what to do with it. We need to know what to do with it. We need to know how to handle this. Rather than just handle it the world's way, they have sunglasses you can wear now that opens the energy fields. They have all kind of gimmicks out there. Yes, Lord. That they say, you know, they want your money, right? Yeah. That they say you can buy it and open yeah. your energy fields. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we must hear the voice here, yes. the trumpet. Yes. We must understand these things. Absolutely. Then we're ready to move on yes. to yes. the seals in Revelation chapter yes. 5. And this book within can be unsealed from the backside. That it is sealed so up good. from yeah. the backside. Yeah. Now, concerning this glass crystal, this sea of glass, as it says, there are three things that we want to consider. Number one is the sea. And let me say this. When you read in Isaiah, I'm not sure what chapter it is, but he talks about the wicked being as the troubled sea. Now, the wicked aren't people that necessarily go out here and kill people or steal or whatever. The wicked can be us just drawing from the lower thoughts yep, when we're yeah. challenged or tempted. There it is. Yep. So there can be the raging sea, but then there can also be the calm sea. And so as we draw, as we yield the left side and we draw from the right side, the raging sea can then become the calm sea. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. And that's what we want to achieve. Yes. We, we want to speak peace mm -hmm. to the raging sea. Come on. Anytime that yeah. the sea is raging within us, oh, I mean, that can yeah. be when we're tempted, when yeah. we're challenged or whatever, or just have lower thoughts. We can speak peace to the raging sea by drawing, by yielding, and then by drawing from the right side or from the Christ mind. Now notice here it says, the sea is like glass. What does that mean? The sea is like glass? Yeah. What does a glass symbolize? Well, a clear glass represents something you can see through. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes clear to you. So the sea that is raging becomes very clear to you mm -hmm. as you draw from the right side and begin to speak peace to it by being in the Christ mind. And you know, I'm of the mind that we shouldn't always have to put on the Christ mind. I'm of the mind that we need to stay in the Christ Come mind. Come on, all time. Oh, oh, So what do we want to talk about? If, if we want to talk about these seven seals being opened as the sea here, we have to
to realize that the sea can be massive. Yeah. It can seem to the natural mind uncontrollable. Yeah. So this yeah. raging sea, again, is the left side oh, that is man. totally out of control and totally not been yielded to the Christ mind within oh, us. This is so good. Wow. Now, verse oh, 6 man. symbolizes, listen, it symbolizes glass like unto crystal. And what did I tell you a couple weeks, of, uh, uh, weeks ago that crystal does? Well, it filters and it transmits. For example, if you pass white light through a crystal, what are you going to see? Seven colors of the rainbow. Yep. Wow. Do you realize you do not have a blue vest on tonight? That's right. Mary does not have red on. I don't have purple on. There are no colors whatsoever until the light reveals it. Yes. And something takes place within our brain, yeah. and then we can see the color. Yes. But there's no such thing as color until the white light begins to reveal it. So what do we have here? We have the filter of the properties of crystal, which will filter out fear. Where did we get fear from? Yeah. Well, religion. Yeah. Our families, our yeah. parents, our government, yeah. our schools, and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Yeah. Guilt was built into us oh. from all of those different directions. Yeah. But we never came here with guilt or fear. No, we did we not. came here upright and we sure embraced that through religiosity. Sure. So now medical science tells us now that fear and guilt will lower your immune system. Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. It will yeah. make you sick. It yeah. will. But what will the mind of Christ do? Right. It will filter out all when you yield that fear and that guilt from the left yeah. side in and of itself. And you slip into that Christ mind, what will happen is it will filter out the guilt and it will filter out all of the fear. Sure does. Because crystal is a transmitter. It, tr right. it, it transmits things. Man. Now, remember I gave you the word azozio a couple weeks ago? And let me just break that down a little bit because the last part of the word, Z-E-O, is a chemical that is called zeolite. And what does zeolite do? It filters all the scum out. Mm -hmm. And what is the first three letters, A, Z, O? It's light. And you can go to Webster's International Dictionary and you can see that it will tell you that light is filtered by crystal. And crystal is the Christ mind. So as we slip into that Christ mind, if we're not already in it, yeah, it will filter out Amen. traditions and doctrines of men. Amen. It'll filter out the things that make us sick. It'll filter out the lowering of our immune system. It'll filter out all of the guilt that we learned in religiosity that's right. or wherever we learned it. Amen. So that's what we want to do. When Listen, when we, when we meditate, when we go into meditation, this crystal will then begin to operate within us and it'll filter out all of the stuff that we don't want to experience yeah, within our lives. Does. It'll filter it all out. So crystal is understanding and pure knowledge from the source of all power and the source of all knowledge which will filter away all of that junk. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Now hang on to Revelation and let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 22. Let me show you some things here. Uh, this that Ezekiel saw here was a viable, visible vehicle, and he connects it with the Christ mind or the terrible crystal. Now, the word terrible is awesome crystal. It's awesome. The Christ mm -hmm. mind is awesome. It'll filter Amen. up all of this stuff. As, as you yield it to Christ, to the right side, and as you are in that Christ mind, be in that Christ mind, it'll filter out all of this stuff that is a hindrance to us and that hurts us. Yeah. That's the key. But look at Ezekiel 1, 22. And remember, he is seeing a viable, visible vehicle. Now, I know some people believe what Ezekiel saw was unidentified flying objects. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, you are that because Isaiah said, Isaiah said that a people like doves fly from window to window. So you can't call us an unidentified flying object if you want to, but I believe it was visible, viable vehicles of glory that he saw that were living from the Christ mind, from the sea of glass, the sea of crystal. That's clear as crystal. Now look what it says here in Ezekiel 1.22. He's describing the vehicle, and he says there, and the likeness of the firmament, listen to this, upon the heads, of the living creatures. Uh -oh. Let's
that you and I. Yep. Upon the heads. Wow. Upon the heads was as the color, and, and crystal has no color, and we've talked about this many times around here. Crystal has no color, but it was on the heads of the living creatures, and it was as the color of the terrible crystal, notice, stretched forth over their heads above. Yeah. So the above is the Christ mind yeah. that is stretched forth over both the left and the right sides, yeah, he mm -hmm. and he's connecting that with a people, visible, viable vehicles of glory, and the word awesome there, as I said, is, is it's awesome, the word terrible is awesome, and that just simply means that it transmutes and it transmits and it gets rid of all of the things that we shouldn't be operating out of anyhow. Wow. Now, go back to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6 again. But I'm going to connect Ezekiel with what I'm talking about here. The terrible crystal stretched forth over who? The cherubim or the living creatures expressing life. Stretched forth over above, which would mean what? Both the left and the right. In other words, they're balanced now and they're one. So it also connects it with then the four faces in Ezekiel 2. And we'll go back to Ezekiel a little later. But in Revelation 4, 7, what I showed you a couple weeks ago was the lion, remember the four faces of Christ as us, the four faces of Christ as us. You have the lion, you have the man, and Ezekiel said that the lion and the man were on the right side. And Ezekiel also said that on the left side was the eagle and the ox. Now both of those, the lion and the eagle, are prominent ones. So what was he talking about? One was on the right, the lion was on the right, and the eagle was on the left. Prominent ones doing what? Bringing balance between the left and the right. Boy. That's what that's talking about. Now also the four faces can relate to the zodiac. Let me show you that. For example... The lion, the eagle, the man, and the ox are, what is the lion according to the zodiac or constellations? Leo. <clears throat> what is the eagle? The eagle is Scorpio. Mm -hmm. What is the man? Aquarius, the man with the water pitcher. Wow. What is the ox? Taurus. Now, in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6, look what it says there. In the middle of the verse of Revelation 4, 6, it says, In the midst of the throne... And round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now, the four beasts can also represent north, south, west, and east. And we know as north, it's what? Dan, because, see, there were three tribes in each corner, the four corners. But there was one prominent tribe in each. Dan was the prominent tribe in the north. Reuben was the prominent tribe in the south. Yep. Ephraim was the prominent tribe in the west. Judah was the prominent tribe on the east, the dawning of the new day. So you see, when you read about these tribes in Numbers chapter 2, as well as in other places, we can see that Dan is emotions, Reuben is the physical of the five senses, Ephraim is intellect, logic, ego, human reasoning, but Judah is what? Judah is on the east side, which is the dawning of the new day, or the age of Aquarius. Now, let me ask you this question. What do you think it is that you have experienced when nighttime comes in the evening? We have experienced this every day of our lives. When nighttime comes in the evening, what happens? The sun sets in the west. What happens when the Christ mind is not flowing? The west, the darkness, the lower thoughts are blocking out the sun. As in the natural, so in the spiritual. Now, the word beast, on one hand, refers to lower beastly thinking. We know, I think it's Revelation chapter 13, it talks about the mark of the beast and worshiping the mark of the beast. What is that talking about? That's not talking about some antichrist is going to rise and people are going to go worship in the city of Jerusalem, this antichrist. No, it's 666, which added is 18, and 8 plus 1 is 9. So it's talking about this beast is talking about, in Revelation 13, just simply the lower thoughts. Mm -hmm. Whereas the 144,000 in Revelation 14, we know, adds up to the same thing. It adds up to nine, which has to do with a heavenly consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you something. Hang on, hang on to Revelation and go to Genesis chapter 6. All things, and I've taught this too in this series, all things have a counterpart. For example, 
In Isaiah, I think it's 45, maybe in verse 7, it talks about God formed the light and created the darkness. Mm -hmm. Well, God didn't create the darkness or no. form the darkness. No, he, he formed the light, mm -hmm. and we are the ones yes. that turn the light into the darkness. And see, the same way with the Christ mind. All the Christ mind is, all that is happening to the Christ mind, when we think with the lower thoughts, is the Christ mind is just simply being inverted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's being turned and it's being inverted because there's only one mind. There you go. Right. Right. Now, right. if you look in Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, it talks about the animals that are brought into the ark by twos. And most people have only heard about the animals brought in by twos. Never heard about they have most have never heard about the seven that were brought in. The ones that were brought in by twos were the unclean animals. Hmm. The ones that were brought in by sevens were the clean animals hmm. or beasts, I should say. So the two, let me read it first of all. 19 and 20 of Genesis 6 says, And of every living thing of all flesh, keyword flesh, of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female. So the ones that were brought in by twos are the unclean animals, which would be the lower thoughts of the 666 beastly mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then if you look in chapter 7 and verse 2, it says, of every clean beast. Most yeah. people never heard about this, the clean yeah. beast. <laughs> of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, Yep. The male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by twos, the male and female. So as I said, most people know nothing or very little about the sevens, which are simply what? The higher, the higher thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now let me just ask you a foolish question. The thing that shows me that this is an allegorical story is what would you do with all the poop? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got all these animals on the ark. Had to be a smelly place for yeah. what? Forty days. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to clean it up? Yeah, exactly. So Same thing we're doing right now. So, <laughs> so listen, the, the seven beasts, which are clean, oh listen, refer to living creatures expressing life. Yes. While the two are the unclean representing logic and reason and intellect and five senses and emotions. Mm -hmm. And this is really what this is talking about. Noah's Ark is a beautiful allegorical picture of us to realize simply that the Ark is between our heads. There you go. Or between our ears. <laughs> Not between our head, between our ears. That's the Ark. Taking the crap out of the See, and listen, there was no window on the side of the ark no, representing yes. what? You were not to look at what was appearing. That's right. <laughs> there was one window in the ceiling you had to look up, and if you didn't yeah. look up, Amen. see, if you looked up, what are you doing? You are embracing yeah. Yeah. the seven That's right. beastly yeah. animals that That's were clean, right. or the beastly thinking, the living creature's thinking that is talked about in the book of Revelation. That's right. Now go back to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6. Can you imagine this? This is a story of allegory. That's right. It's a story of allegory. Someone says, well, didn't it literally happen? Well, I don't really care whether it did or not. It's not that important to me. I just understand that it's talking about you and I, just like the tabernacle is talking about you and I with the outer court, and holy place, holy holies, which we'll talk about later. Now in Revelation 4 and verse 6, look what it says. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Now remember, the throne is what? Isaiah said, our heart awareness is the throne. So before the throne, there was a sea of glass. And the sea of glass is what? It's our Christ mind. Mm -hmm. So within our throne, yes. which is our heart awareness, is this clarity of vision, this sea of glass, like in the crystal. It is so good. That transmits things. Yes, yeah. it does. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, listen to this, full of eyes. Remember I told you a couple weeks ago, when you begin to visualize things through the single eye, you're full of eyes. Yeah, mm -hmm. amen. I used to think my mother had eyes behind her head because she could see everything I did that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know you've all thought about that. Mm -hmm. We, when we see through our single eye, we're full of eyes. Amen. We're full of eyes. But notice what it says. It says, full of eyes before and behind. Now, to be full of eyes represents perfection of perception. Yeah. Yeah. 
seeing through the single eye, which Jesus encouraged us to do, which is the mind of Christ, that's all it is. Seeing with the single eye is what lights our body up. And we've said this many times. It, 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 it's, you can connect it to the single eye to the pineal. And the pineal produces the melatonin that kills cancer cells, reverses the aging process, balances the circadian rhythm, and does a whole bunch of other things. But let me look at this behind and before. When you're seeing through, visioning things through the single eye, you're full of eyes behind. In other words, you see your origin. Wow. Amen. You see your origin. Amen. Clearly seeing your origin, that you did not come here as a sinner. Come on, King. You didn't come here lost. The only place you were lost was That's between the ears. Yeah. You didn't need to be saved. Second Timothy 1 9 and what is it? Ephesians 1 4. Maybe it's 1 Timothy 1 9. Tells us that we were saved from before the yes. foundation. Yeah. Now we had to acknowledge that, certainly. We acknowledge that to experience it and to walk in it. But what we need to understand here is the behind, having eyes behind, means that we recognize our origin. Yep. Yep. That our origin was spirit. Yes. Our spirits go down to visibility. Yep. We evolved out of the Father. That's what the word created means. A lot of people are, you know, kind of don't have much understanding, and I've had many questions about the word created. But created means to cut down for a formative process, or to bring out of the invisible realm to the visible realm. That's what it means. So we're seeing our origin with the eyes that are behind our head. And before, when you have eyes before, as it says here, before and behind, full of eyes, when you see before, what you are seeing is the simple fact that once you begin to live from the Christ mind, once you begin to live by spirit rather than judging things by good and evil or the appearance realm, then you begin to see where you are headed wow. as far as your awareness is concerned yes. and as far as subjective experience is concerned. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know where you're headed. Yes, I do. And listen, you have to know where you came from yes. before you can know where you're going. Come on. You have to have eyes behind yep. before you can have eyes ahead of you. Amen. Come on. So, so that's the clarity here where it talks about in Revelation chapter 4, seeing clear as crystal which comes from the right side or comes from the Christ mind. Yep. Now look at verse 7. Are you in Revelation 4? Verse 7 states, and the first beast was like a lion. That's Leo. Leo. What do beasts do? They lead. Yep. King of the beast. They rule, right? That's the first beast. The second beast was like a calf. Now why a calf? How I many know that Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on the fowl of a donkey, a child of a donkey, a little one of a donkey? And what did he say? Unless you become as a little child, you cannot experience the kingdom of God. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. So it's about being childlike or putting on that childlike aspect of our being. Yeah. It's also because it's the child of promise as us to the world. Oh. Did you know that you're the child of promise to the world? Oh. Hey, and that's what we see that. here. Yep. That's what we see here in the first Jeez. beast being the lion, the ruling one. The second beast, a calf, yeah. being childlike. And then it says, then the third beast had the face of a man. That's Aquarius. When you see the water pitcher, remember yep. last Sunday, Passover? Jesus said, I'm not going to pass. I'm not going to experience this Passover with you again until I do it anew in the kingdom. And then what did he say in the next breath? He said, when you see the man with the water pitcher, follow after him, go into the upper room, turn within your own house, go into the higher consciousness, and you'll find the room is already furnished. You don't have to furnish for any ritual Passover because it's already furnished. Amen. So that's the man there, the Aquarius. And then, and then the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, which is Scorpio. So... In other words, the constellations point to our seven energy fields. And how do they point to our seven energy fields? Well, the four faces point to the prominent sides, the very prominent signs of the constellations. And the constellations, what do they point to? They point to the sun energy, the chrism, the anointing, the Christ, being raised up from the lowest energy field all the way up to enveloping the pineal and the pituitary. And then, as it says in Malachi, when the sun, S-U-N, that solar plexus energy, rises up with healing in his wings, 
that is health. That's the experience of health and it's fruit that remains. That's why we must learn to draw out of our own well. Now, I'm not against laying hands on people and praying for them. I'm not against that at all. But I'm saying there's a greater way. There's a more excellent way to do this to where it is fruit that remains. Amen. Rather than fruit that's here today and gone tomorrow. Now, go back to Ezekiel. Go back to Ezekiel. Hang on to Revelation. But go back to Ezekiel chapter 10. And here he's referring to you. These visible, viable vehicles of glory. And what is glory? It's not just goosebumps on top of goosebumps. It. I mean, it's that, but it's more than that. More it's than the that. view of the opinion of the Father. Yes. It's the mind of Christ. Yes. So Ezekiel chapter 10, and here he's talking about the four faces. Changes them up a little bit. Look what it says in verse 10. And as for the likeness of their faces. Now remember, this is you. They four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, right? So what do you have on the right side? The one that rules, the lion, Leo, right? And they four had the face of an ox, Taurus, or bull, on the left side, and also on the left side was the face of an eagle. So as I said a couple weeks ago, you have a prominent one on each side, the right side and the left side. Yep. You have the lion on the right side, and you have an eagle on the yep. left side, two prominent ones. What is that saying? The goal is to balance the two, the yes. left and the right, together. That's our goal. Amen. And what is he associating these with? He's associating them with the visible, viable vehicle of glory. Amen. And each of these, as I said, can line up with the four major constellations. And the four major constellations have to do with the energy, again, the sun coming down on the heart of the earth, three days and three nights, and we talked about that in Passover last week, and then rising up and bringing forth that health within our, lighting Amen. up, listen, lighting up, not only are the energy fields lit up, but every cell of your body, Amen. your DNA is lit up. Amen. It's all lit up. Now, it's already lit objectively, but I mean in our experience, don't we want that? Yes. Instead of thinking, you know, that it's in the sweet by and by, after we die, the pie in the sky, or after the rapture of the church. This is how it's going to come. And that's why we are entering in, experientially, into Aquarius. Right? That's our Passover now. Right. Oh, I know. Wow. It's going to cause some flack out there. <laughs> but that's our Passover now. Amen. The disciples came and said, where should we go to prepare for the Passover? What did he say? Look for the man with the water pitcher. That's the constellation yes. of Aquarius. And go into the house, go, go into in yourself, go into the upper room, the higher consciousness, yeah, yeah. the ark yeah. that we read about in Genesis chapter 6. Yeah. And when you get into that higher consciousness, you're going to see that it's all furnished. Amen. It's all there. You lack nothing whatsoever. Amen. Now, let me say a couple other things. I'm about ready to quit here. In the construction of the tabernacle, God told Moses to make it exactly according to the pattern that was given. And he was told to make an outer court, a holy place, and a holy of holies, separated by a veil. And when you look at the brain, I didn't bring it on tonight, but when you look at the brain, I shared with you a couple weeks ago, there's a lining in the brain. One lining is called, and this is the inner, most holy place, the yep. inner place. One lining is called the pia mater, P-I-A-M-A-T-U-R, pia mater, which means the tender mother. Yes. When you come to really, really understand, and we'll never understand it, but you come to a greater understanding of the love of the Father. Yes, you do. And the other lining is the dura mater. It, it, it really means the hard mother. And what is that? That's still the love of the Father, but it's the love of the Father in correcting us. And that's yes. what we want, right? We want corrected. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we have the Christ mind. We yes. want the instructions yeah. that Revelation 4 is talking to us about. So you have this pia mater, you have this dura mater, and in between the pia mater and the dura mater is what is called the arachnoid that, me that means the veil, the covering, or the web. Mm. And so this depicts the tabernacle not made with hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of these things I'm describing, you can find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 where it talks about the tabernacle not made with hands. And it infers our right side and our left side Amen. and all that's involved with our brain. Because the point is for us to bring our Christ mind to the brain. Mm -hmm. To join it with our brain. Mm -hmm. 
and not just think out of our brain yeah. intellectually or with reasoning or simple logic. That's not the point. So now I brought you here to Ezekiel. Look, look if you will, in Ezekiel 41 and verse 17. I'll give you a couple more and then we'll close. Ezekiel 41 and verse 17. So Ezekiel saw in chapter 1 and verse 10 these four beasts, each of them representing a different aspect of experience that you and I experience. Okay? But here in Ezekiel chapter 41 and verse 17, look what it says. It says, To that above the door, even unto the inner house and without, and by all the wall round about within and without by measure. So if this tabernacle that Moses constructed, and if this that Ezekiel was seeing was this building, and if it's our head, and if it can be pointed to the Pia Mater and the Dura Mater, the, the sensitive part, the loving side of God's nature, and the corrective side of God's nature, then we can see that Ezekiel had a vision of something that was going on on the inside of each and every one of us yep. if we are progressing in our heart awareness. Amen. If we're yielding the Amen. left side to the right side. Amen. So let me read that again. To that above the door, even unto the inner house and without. And by all the wall round about within and without by measure. So, so in applying the tabernacle, to our head, the inner house would be the pia mater, or the inner part of the brain. The inner part of the brain. And then look at verse 18, jump on down to verse 18, and it says, and it was made with cherubims. Now, we talked about the Ark of the Covenant early on when I started the series of teaching, and I said there were cherubim on the right and on the left side. Right. Mm -hmm. And I applied those to the part of our brain called the cerebrum. Yep. The cerebrum. And it's it's all talking about what is going on on the inside of our, our head. Right. So the, the cherubim on the ark is the cerebrum, or what? Or the right and the left hemispheres of our brain. That's right. So then notice it goes on to say in verse 18, and it was made with cherubims and palm trees. Now, palm trees speak of maturity. It sure does. So that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub. So between all of this stuff that I shared with you, it has to do with elders, it has to do with maturity, it has to do with the mind of Christ, yep. it has to do with our brain, bringing the Christ mind to our brain. Then it goes on to say in verse 19, so that the face of a man, Aquarius, was toward the palm tree on the one side and the face of a young lion, Leo, toward the palm tree on another side. So this is simply referring to the beast or the living creatures that we see in the book of Revelation and where we see that we are brought to a place of what? Of, of this Leo the lion or a place of ruin. Now let me say it this way. This refers, as we just read here, let me go back to 19 again, so that the face of a man, Aquarius, was toward the palm tree, maturity, on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. So what is this referring to where it talks about Leo, and it talks about it talks about the lion, and it talks about the man, Aquarius. What is it talking about? It is simply talking about enlightenment, which rules. Wow. Aquarius, the man, wow. enlightenment, the age of enlightenment, and lion, speak of Leo, speaks of ruling. So it's enlightenment that we're getting that causes us to rule. Come on, James. Amen. That's good. Now, Amen. I've heard people for years say, oh, we're going to rule planets, and we're going to yeah. go. <laughs> Listen. You ain't gonna rule nothing until you can rule the lower thoughts. Yep. Well then, Amen. and once we can rule the lower thoughts, Amen. and Amen. yield the left side to the yep. right side, Amen. we ain't about ruling nothing. Come on, King. Yep. We'll rule nothing whatsoever. No, it has to start at home. It has to yep. start at home. It has to start at home. Now, man, that is so. Then good. in Daniel, where we see the left side in and of itself. Daniel 7, if you go to Daniel 7, you're in Ezekiel, go to Daniel 7, we see the left side in Daniel in and of itself, and we see the havoc that it creates. Wow. The fear, the guilt. Wow. Not causing that Christ mind to filter out yes. all of the fear and the guilt and all of the junk right. that's hurtful to us. Yeah. Yeah. And look what it says in Daniel 7, Daniel 7 verse 3, and the four great beasts came up from the sea Diverse from one another. Mm -hmm. So now these four beasts 
And the beast we see in Revelation, and the clean beast, or excuse me, not the clean beast, but the unclean, unclean. beast that we saw in Genesis right. chapter 6, represent what? The lower thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing here in Daniel is the lower thoughts. He's dealing with the lower thoughts. And look what it says in verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. So again, we have the combination here of what? Leo and Scorpio. Verse 5, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it was raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Mm -hmm. So what this is denoting here is that the lower fleshly thoughts will rip yeah. you apart. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's saying there. Exactly. It's not people that rip you apart. No, it's not. <laughs> Remember what I shared one time about the saying? Get your eyes Buddha? out of the other person. Buddha said that a person Kate. cannot hurt you. Come on, Kate. But if a person hurts you and you feel like they've hurt you, yes. you have not nope. cleaned up the sediment that's in the cup. Yeah. All they can do is stir up the sediment in the cup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so if we've only cleaned the outside of the cup and it's the salsa, real. then guess what? That's right. Yes, we can be offended. And yes. yes, we can experience hurt. Yes. But it's only because the yes. fat's on the inside of us to begin with. Yes. Who yes. yes. won that one? Wow. You rip amazing. yourselves apart. Yes. What? By living from the left yes. side. Yes. And wanting to stay on that yep. left side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on in verse 6, still in Daniel. <laughs> After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, oh, God, which had cool. upon the back of it four wings. Now, oh, a leopard gosh. speaks to us of confusion. Why? Because it's truth mingled with error. Truth Because it has error. black and white stripes. Oh, black and white stripes. Spots, I'm sorry. Spots. Better watch out for them spots. Black and yeah. white spots. Yeah. So what is it? People talk about Babylon in Revelation. Yes. I hear them saying, oh, it means confusion. No, it means confusion by mixture. mixture. Yeah. And listen, just a little bit of truth can be dangerous. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Yes, we have the balance. Yeah. And the truth so good. Now look at verse 7. Man. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So what is this talking about here in Daniel? Well, it's talking about what some people call the dark night of the soul. Remember when Nic uh, Nicodemus, Brother Nick, came to Jesus and it says he came by night? night. Yeah. What does that mean? I know I hear people say, well, because he didn't want persecuted from all the people. He didn't want anyone to see him coming, so he came at night. More than that, it was the time that he knew the least about being born again. <laughs> he was in a dark night of the soul. Amen. And that's why he came at night. Oh, that is so good. You see? And so what this is talking about back here in Daniel, when you get down to verse 7, it's talking about not yielding yep. the left side to the right side. Amen. It's talking about just allowing all of those, you know, not harnessing any of those lower thoughts whatsoever or yielding any of those lower thoughts whatsoever. And it's not just lower, dark thoughts that come to us. You know, that, that talk to us and tell us, well, you're not this, you're not that, yeah. you're not that. It's even just thinking out of the intellect and the human yeah. reasoning, trying yeah. to figure things out ourselves, yeah. Yeah. rather than being the wisdom and the Christ right. that we are. Yeah. So, here's the story of Revelation chapter 4. That is so good. And next week, Lord willing, we'll talk about, you know, it talks about these living creatures expressing life. It talks about them saying, holy, 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 mm. night and day. Well, let me ask you, how could you say holy, holy, night and day? Yeah. <laughs> Impossible. Yeah. And then it talks about casting your crowns at the throne. Mm. What is that? Well, we're going to figure that out next week. Um. We're going to let the Spirit figure that out and show us. Right? Amen. A better way of saying it, right? Amen. So Amen. when you look in Revelation, you look in Ezekiel, you look in Daniel... What you have here is just portraying lower thoughts and higher yes. thoughts. Yes. And a lot of people have looked at these books as eschatology. You know, what's going to happen in the earth? And the monsters coming out of the sea yes. in Revelation yes. and bugs as big as Volkswagens and all that sort of a scary thing. 
But I posed the question Wednesday evening, and maybe I did two weeks ago as well. Why does the scripture say in Revelation chapter 1 that if we understand this book, we're going to be blessed? Yep. Yeah. And why does it say the throttle's in our hand if there's nothing that we can do about the war and the battles? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And why does it say it's the revelation of Jesus Christ? Yeah. And why does it say he sent and signified it to his angel, yes. to John by his angel, signified meaning sign and symbol? Yeah. Yeah. It's symbolic. We, yeah. have to, we have to read it. In the symbolism that it was given in. We have to be in the spirit that John was in yep. on the Lord's, Lord's day, day, which doesn't mean Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, no. but the Lord's day was an experience to him. Experience. A subjective experience that the man was having. Yep. And so when we can hear by spirit, then we will subjectively experience the day of the Lord. That's right. We'll begin to walk in it. Right. So what have we seen so far tonight? Well, we've seen the sea of glass can be raging or we can calm it. It's up to us. It can be raging or we can calm it. The door is Aquarius or enlightenment. The trumpet is that word that goes off on the inside of us by the inspiration. It brings about a sound within us. It brings about harmony. The jaspers are Christ's mind. The sardine is our emotions being yielded. The rainbow within us connects yes. heaven and earth together. The emerald right. is the life that we experience in the astral plane. The oh, lightning yes. is what? It's the, it's the movement, it's the quickening and the conceiving of the word within us. The thunderings are shakings that bring about change between our ears. The voices are the instructions that we need to be able to open yes. the seals properly. The four lamps of fire are simply the sevenfold spirit of God moving just from the gift realm, moving into the knowing of the sevenfold spirit of God where we know that we know that we know and then it also represents the seven energy fields being opened the sea of glass is us seeing clear as crystal living Amen. out of the Christ mind the Amen. four beasts denote the right and the left hemisphere being joined together full of eyes behind and before you got to know your uh, origin if you're going to know where you're going where you're headed yep. all of this will fall in place Amen. See, Ezekiel, didn't Ezekiel say in one place that the wings, because these beasts had wings, the wings of the cherubim were heard clear out of the outer yes. court. Yes. What are the wings? The voice yes. of spirit. Yes. It's the voice of God. So as I said, Revelation 4 is really the prerequisite or the preparatory instruction that we need to know before we're going to try to open these seals. Wow. Because any other way that we try to open the seals up that's beyond what we can study here in the book of Revelation right before chapters 5 and 6, which talk about the opening of the seals, it's not going to work. Yeah, At least yeah. it's not going to be fruit that remains. Yeah. 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 It's not going to be fruit that remains. So to me, the main key for opening and having that anointing and chrism flowing in our physical bodies is meditation. Yeah. Yeah. It's meditation. And as I've said so many times before, you don't have to tie yourself to the bed or the chair and meditate hours on end. Just throughout the day, let yeah. your mind be on Amen. Christ within. Yeah. Who you are, yeah. who you've always been, the truth Amen. that you are. Amen. That's meditation. Amen. And little by little, the sevenfold candelabra will begin to be lit wow. within us. Amen. Not in some tabernacle somewhere. In this tabernacle, Amen. in this house, yeah. right here. That's how I want to be lit. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, oh, we're going to talk about these, as it says, saying holy, 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 night and day. And I'm going to say impossible. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to talk about the reality of casting crowns before the throne. And I'm sure you already know. Well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> I remember hearing years ago that when you get to heaven, you take your crown, you cast it at the feet of Jesus. Well, you know what? We're already doing that. Yes. Yes. We're already casting our crowns before the throne. Amen. All happening within us. Amen. Amen. All happening within wow. us. And it's a beautiful picture, folks. Yep. It's a beautiful picture Amen. of who he has made us to be yes. and what he has endowed us with. Yes. He's given us all things that pertain to life, natural yep. life, and godliness, spiritual yep. life. We lack absolutely yep. nothing. Amen. We have all the tools. All the tools. We're getting the instruction, and we can experience it subjectively. All the tools. And Don't the you tools. want to? Yes. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we just thank you, thank you for your word, thank you. spirit that is conceiving, yeah. 
Yes. Quickening that word within us. Yes, Lord. That we might experience who we've always been objectively. Amen. Yes. Thank so you for this people. Thank you. Thank you for people that are open to hear yes. the truth and want to oh, experience, amen. desire to experience yes. it subjectively. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. amen.